Hi and welcome to the Kinder and in today's video I'm going to show you what you might like to do if you have an excess of pears. Okay first things first I've got this uh, container and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stuff to uh, just sterilize it and um, that is really important because I am going to be using the natural wild yeast on the fruit but I don't want any other bugs getting into the thing there we go A teaspoon of that in there some water And a good shake. So this is a what, 25 litre food grade container and I'm just going to leave that with the uh, stuff in it while I go and pick some pears. So we've got far more pears than we can reasonably eat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a uh, pulp fermentation technique to make some perry. Um, now perry is pear cider and uh, you might have heard of baby sham so that's basically the stuff. And uh, pulp fermentation really just means that you are going to put the whole fruit into a container and let nature take its course. But there is one little step which is absolutely key to making sure that you actually get a decent result. So they're all just falling straight off the tree at the moment and it does feel like it's a waste. <laughs> I've got some pears and uh, what I'm going to do now and this stage isn't essential unlike uh, what I'm going to show you in a minute I'm just going to chop them up and the reason I'm going to chop them up is uh, my nice freshly rinsed out container um, I'll be able to get more into it more fruit into it packed in if it's in smaller chunks so I'm going to get on with that So as I said, it's not essential to chop them up. You don't need to worry about making them too small. It's just gonna get a little bit more into the container because of course, if the fruits um, are still round, they're not gonna sieve into lock and take up the extra space. So you might be asking, where is the press? You know, don't I need a uh, press to turn uh, apples into juice or pears into juice? And the answer is no. Pulp fermentation is uh, a way of getting around having to buy loads of, you know, expensive equipment that you're just going to use once a year and it's going to clog up your garage. So I'm going to continue with these and uh, I'll show you the secret. So there we go. I've got as much in there as I possibly can. That's nicely packed out. And I'm going to squeeze the lid on. <laughs> If I can get it on with the uh, pears in the way. Now, it must be said, you don't even need to have uh, a thing like this. You know, you can just use a bucket and just cover it up. Um, yeah, <laughs> any container will do. And for the next stage, we need to go down to the village. So, come along. You get in the car. Have a get. Good girl. Go on, one final push. Yeah. Oh, I've really got to do something about this road. It 
it uh, rained really heavily in June and uh, this became a river and washed it all out. Anyway, not something I'm going to do on a nice warm day. So this is the old village school and uh, although there aren't actually any children who go to school here anymore we do use it for parties and uh, for dinners and what have you and the reason I've come down here is to show you the absolutely most important bit of pulp fermentation. So here it is, the old schoolroom and just in here we have a wonderful kitchen and the chest freezer. There we go. So, why the freezer? Well, I'm going to freeze the fruit because it's going to cause the cell walls to break down and that means that the liquid is going to be able to get out much more easily. So to recap, all I've done is pick the fruit chopped it up, put it into a bucket and chucked it in the freezer. Now I'm just going to leave that there for 24, 48 hours or until I feel ready to uh, do the next bit and um, meanwhile just going to have a look at the village. See the old uh, wash space, the lavoir and that's actually still in use which is pretty cool and aside from the school we've got some really quite interesting things going on. And like much of rural Portugal, there's plenty for sale. So if you fancy a nice little village house, you need to talk to Teresa Simao, who is nobody I know. So hopefully she'll give you good service if, you, if that's what you want. Wow, there's a bang in the middle of the village. We actually have a natural swimming pool. But you can see someone's using the water at the moment. This little chapel is the uh, Capela de Nossa Senhora das Cabeças and uh, on the 15th of August there is a big village party and uh, we were just up here on the 15th of August last year when we noticed the smoke coming over and we realised that we had a really big problem and uh, then the wildfire struck This ancient, ancient chestnut. What a tree. And there we are looking back up the hill to the Quinta. And see the caravan defiantly in the middle of the shot. I want to move that really, it's a bit of an eyesore. Proper block of ice. Okay, so goodness me. Here we have the frozen pears. You've got it on your side. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put these slightly back up. I'm going to put this in uh, the cellar which is you know roughly room temperature and I'm just going to leave it for a few days. I'm not going to leave it out in the sun to defrost, nothing like that and what should have happened is we've taken advantage of the freeze thaw effect whereby of course as you'll know water expands when it turns to ice. That burst the cell wall of the, uh, the the fruit so all the juiciness hopefully will have come out of these little sort of pockets and the other thing that uh, 
you know, 24 hours in the freezer should have done is killed off any bugs that might have been living in the pears because of course it's undesirable to uh, you know, have things living in there. Um, you know, it's inevitable that's going to be the old bug floating around, isn't it? Anyway, thank you, Keith. He's annoyed because I didn't let him out today because uh, he attacked me yesterday when I did his water. Had a little pussy cat. So, totally forgotten what I was saying now. Honestly, these animals. Oh, yes. <laughs> So this is a process that you can, of course, do with apples. Um, I have in the past used this process to make uh, cider and very good it was too. Um, this is actually the first time I've tried it with pears, so we'll see what the peri turns out like. And again, you're going to end up roasted. Only half joking. So just to reiterate, we are going to be taking advantage of the natural yeast on the fruit. I'm not going to add... It's almost as bad as the trains. I'm not going to add any uh, anything else to it. So, you know, it is a little bit unpredictable as to how it's going to come out. But uh, it should be okay. Now, <laughs> just something that is worthwhile bearing in mind. Um, when the uh, yeast acts on the sugar, it produces two things, um, alcohol and carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide, of course, is what uh, makes plants grow and what makes drinks fizzy. <laughs> now, in the past, I have made ginger beer as well, and I might actually show you a recipe for that one. Um, and if you want to create unpredictable IEDs, uh, then making ginger beer and putting it in glass bottles is an extremely way, a good way to do it. Because what happens is the pressure builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up and eventually they go pop. Um, I gave my grandparents some ginger beer I'd made and uh, I said to them, drink it today. You know, if you're going to drink it, drink it today. Otherwise, you know, down the sink and don't tell me about it. Anyway, so three days later, uh, left on the the side um, in their kitchen, it blew half of their cabinetry to smithereens. And uh, yeah, when I made the final batch, I actually lined them up beautifully in the shed. It looked really nice. And um, yeah, that wasn't a good idea because um, yeah, it's like dominoes. They blew to blew everything to smithereens and it was really really dangerous to go into the shed anyway why this silly anecdote carbon dioxide builds up and the yeast keeps on making it keeps on making it and if you don't have some way for it to get out then you are creating effectively um, a bomb um, and that is a very well sealed con you know, very well sealed container at the moment uh, before, you know, it's going to melt down and everything. And before it actually starts to ferment, I will crack the lid ever so slightly so that the pressure can get released. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. And, you know, I'm not an expert on brewing and there are plenty of other channels that uh, I'm sure you can go and find out about how it's all done. Um, anyway, I'll come back in a few days and show you what's going on. So, in other fruit-related news, um, I've noticed that the uh, tomatoes uh, have got blossom end rot, and that literally is what it sounds like, where the flower forms right at the end, it starts rotting away. And this is apparently due to a lack of calcium. Hello, I'm being meowed at. So, I've gone and bought some chalk. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to smash this up into a powder and I'm going to just sprinkle it around the uh, tomato beds. And with any luck, that is going to uh, prevent the uh, future problem. 
So, let's get on with that. I have a uh, tea towel. about a week later and the uh, pears have produced quite a lot of juice so I'm going to siphon it out I've got a sterilized uh, container for it to go into I've sterilized the pipe and we're just going to siphon it through see what it tastes like it could be really really bad Cider. Nicer than cider. Absolutely. It's not too sweet. No, it's not sweet at all. Bit of acidity. A nice. little bit of a fizz. You might need to settle a bit. Mm. It's fermented. Yeah, it'll carry on fermenting, but it'll lose all its sweetness. Mm. Mm. Not too bad, actually. Long time of day to be drinking, but uh, right. We'll wait and see whether there are any disastrous results in the stomach department. 